Hello everybody, it's Mark here from The Guitar Marketplace and today we've got what is, I suppose, a New Year's special really, unboxing. Um, we've got a fair amount of boxes, uh, seven in total. Um, I'm not sure what any of the ones, any of the guitars in the boxes are. Ben's only told me there's a few quirky stuff that I might, may not know too much about. Um, so, but I want to make sure that I do this slowly and safely because I don't fancy being in hospital over the Christmas period. <laughs> so everyone knows I'm dangerous with these things. Um, so yeah, let's start, let's crack into some boxes. I'm gonna start with this one. It looks a little beat up this box, as I'm not gonna lie. I think it sums up the uh, British Postal Service really. The box says fragile on it and there's cuts and dents all throughout the box. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm not going to lie, this feels a little bit like a second Christmas. It's always fun to open boxes for you lot. It's always a fun part of my day. What we'll probably do as well is, probably three of my favourites, we'll do it a bit like a, a chair situation. So if it makes my top three, we'll do a video of them at the end, play them, get some sounds of them. I'll try and give you some information on the guitars as we go through the unboxing as well. So there might be a few little cuts and pauses where I'll find some research out about the instruments that we are unboxing. Obviously the only downside to these unboxings folks is the amount of packaging and rubbish I do have to get through to get to the gold on the other side. Now this intrigues me. I could see Sigma on the box. Now personally for me Sigma's been a brand I've kind of always been a little interested in. When I found out kind of how good, I'm hoping it's an acoustic to be honest, when I found out how good they were for the money, they've always been a guitar I've looked at as getting maybe sort of like an affordable version of a J45. So I'm hoping it's an acoustic here today to be honest. Um, so there's always been quite a strange thing with Sigma. So I know with the logo at the top for instance, it used to look a lot like the Martin logo, and to be fair, it was a real selling point to me. Uh, I kind of found them slightly too late though when they changed the logo to that, which I'm not the biggest fan, to be honest. It's probably the reason I haven't taken a punt on the Sigma is the logo on the top, where if it'd have been the old style, probably, I'm guessing pre-lawsuit, uh, if it'd have been the old style, I probably would have purchased a guitar from them long ago, to be honest. I'm still none the wiser as to whether this is an acoustic or an electric. It is quite light. Well, this is the thing with unboxings because I can see Sigma. I've got a rough idea of what they're like as a brand. However, from what I can see of the guitar on the inside, is nothing like I was expecting. Because we have a flying V shaped guitar. <laughs> is it a V? I think it is. If you're wondering why I'm wearing my coat, folks, uh, it was currently, I think it was minus eight last night, minus nine last night. Uh, it still hasn't really warmed up yet in the West Midlands. So uh, <laughs> let's say it's a bit chilly in here today. Um, is it a Sigma? It can't be, surely. No, of course it's not. It's a Jackson. That's the beauty with these unboxings, folks. It's full of curveballs. It's full of guitars packaged in different boxes. But, let's have a look at this. Okay, so we've got a Floyd Rose loaded Jackson. It's still a little cold at the moment. Chinese made. It's quite a quirky guitar. I don't know too much about it, so probably gonna pan off camera just a second and get you a little more information. Uh, now that we're back, folks, I can tell you that this is a Jackson JS32 Road Series. We've got some zebra loaded humbuckers. We've got a very thin sort of speed neck, 24 jumbo frets. It's quite an affordable guitar. However, you kind of are loaded out on parts here, so a lot of your money is in the Floyd Rose. I'm guessing to be hot, humbuckers but it feels like quite a nice little guitar it is very quirky we've started with a bit of a rogue one haven't we <laughs> um, but yeah perfect so let's crack on let's open another box shall we 
I do love unboxing guitars and know nothing about. Personally, for me, it's a great way of finding out something else that I didn't already know before it. Now we've got an Epiphone box. But if it's anything like the last one we just opened, that means absolutely nothing. I do always find it fascinating as well when, when a box gets sent not from sort of a main retailer as well. And they're second hand. Some of the weird and wonderful packaging that you do experience is uh, really something to be desired. I can't imagine there's anything other than an Epiphone in this, so I'd be very surprised if it's not. Well, this looks fantastic, to be honest. Uh, I want to say it's an SG, sort of a Les Paul custom sort of style. The beautiful sort of modern Epiphone headstock, which I think is one of the best things I've ever done, to be honest. Just a very nice, albeit slightly cold currently, ebony, SG, Epiphone made. Now that is one I might be plugging in at the end of tonight's uh, unboxing, today's unboxing, should I say. Um, so we'll chuck this on the wall for now and we'll get cracking and open another one. I must say, we found out, so I watched a video on the new Kirk Hamley, uh, Les Paul Rishi they've just done. Um, and the speculations is, obviously that guitar went for about 50 grand. The speculations are they're releasing a few versions. Uh, one of the speculations is that one of them might actually be an Epiphone version of it. So it'd be very interesting to see how far and how close they kind of get, you know, Epiphone have got to basically mimic a 59 Les Paul, so it's going to almost be like an Epiphone's collector's choice, really. Um, which I imagine will still be plus a thousand pounds. Um, but they've notoriously always made good guitars, really. And it'd be very interesting to kind of see where they do go with that and what route they go down with that level of reissue. I'd love to see them maybe kind of try and do a relic job. Obviously, it's not something we really see a lot from Epiphone. Okay, so here we are. We have a PRS SE case. Is it going to be a John Mayer Sieg? What's it going to be? Is it just going to be a Custom 24? I believe it's a Silver Sky, folks. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a PRS SE Silver Sky. The John Mayer signatures, if you're not already aware. Honestly, such a great guitar. Still got all the, uh, the covers on, all that good stuff, all the hang tags. I do love these guitars. I think there's so, so much value for money in them. You really could never get a guitar at this price point 20 years ago, 25 years ago, but... What this guitar gives you now, honestly, I think it's personally better than most sort of strats of this price point, without a doubt, to be honest. It's a great guitar, I love it. I love how they play, I love how they feel, I love how they sound. Um, so we'll get this on the wall and we'll pop back to open another box, but probably almost definitely gonna do a little sample, little demo of this guitar, because I do truly love them. So we're absolutely flying through this unboxing, folks. We've got four guitars left for you now. Will say, I'm looking forward to plugging a few in and dusting off the cobwebs. I'm yet to play guitar so far today. Let's have a look, what have we got here? Sorry if you hear me humming during the unboxing. Uh, I've been traveling to work over the last week or so listening to Blackberry Smoke who I think are criminally underrated. Um, I don't believe the drummer's too well at the moment either. Um, so my best wishes to him, but my God, they have made some incredible albums. They really have. 
and uh, I'm currently listening to the one with Like an Arrow on. I can't quite remember which one that is. Um, but absolutely incredible album, to be honest. If you haven't heard it, do check it out. Just great Southern rock. I haven't even seen what uh, brand this is. Uh, Ibanez, okay. On the box it's saying a uh, Ibanez RGA42EX Black Aurora Burst Matte. Still think it's second hand. Still got all the tags, still got all that good stuff. Everything is in that box right there. What do we make of it? Again, got a super fast sort of feeling neck on it. It's going to be that similar sort of ilk to that Jackson, to be honest. I imagine a touch more expensive, maybe. Uh, the matte finish feels great on it. It's not my type of guitar, personally, but looks pretty banging. Um, don't have a Floyd Rose on it, just have a regular hardtail sort of bridge, which, to be honest, I like. I do like the idea of that. Two sort of humbuckers. Headstock's lovely, to be honest. That sort of... Uh, see if we can pick that up on the camera. It's coming through really well on the light, actually. I really do like the look of that guitar. We might almost definitely see how this one sounds anyway. I'm very intrigued by it. It's almost looking purple as I've just put it on that wall as well. The way the light's hitting it, really kind of bringing it to life actually. That's a really nice finish. I think it said it was an Aurora Silver. Aurora Burst Matte. Um, but there's definitely layers to that uh, finish. I really like that. Now we've got two guitar guitar, we've got three guitar guitar boxes. Are they all gonna be from guitar guitar? I have no idea. I genuinely have no idea. Um, this one's very light. I'm hoping this is an acoustic. I really do hope it's an acoustic. For any of you that have watched these videos before, no, I almost... I don't know too much about acoustic guitars, but I'm obsessed with them. I'm obsessed with how they sound. Because I think you can always get a guitar... You can get an electric guitar sometimes, and even if you pay like top money for it, you can almost be deceived by how it sounds based off the pickups. And actually, it's quite rare to find one that just absolutely sings on its own. However, we've had that with a few recently, such as the Epiphone Carina Explorer that we've had in. And we've had an SG in like a mirror glass finish. And they were guitars that were so loud. And you could just tell it was a great guitar before you plugged it in. Uh, but I love that with acoustics, you can't really get away with it. You can't really hide it. The guitar doesn't sing, it won't sing. It doesn't matter regardless of what you do with it. No. Okay, so it is an acoustic and it's actually a brand I've heard a decent amount about, but I've never played one. Again, I think it's one of them, I think it's always been the headstock that's kind of put me off it, um, or the badge, should I say. Because uh, what I'm looking at here, folks, is a Faith acoustic guitar. I always feel like they're geared a little bit more towards sort of like a metal player that wants an acoustic. Almost just based off design, like I don't really get like a sort of a classic vibe off them. Um, I have heard good things about them though. I think, didn't Rob Chapman play one for a bit or was sponsored one, we did, did a bit of work, but we've kind of got a lovely, so what are we looking at here? An F-P-N-E-C-K. Neptune Electro Nexus series in copper black. We've got a solid Indian mahogany. So, sorry, say that again. We've got a solid Indonesian mahogany, a solid Indonesian mahogany uh, back and sides as well as the top, and then we've got a solid Indonesian ebony fittings. Designed in England, handmade in Indonesia. Got a little signature there as well. I've got really high expectations on this guitar. I 
Oh my god, that guitar's incredible. Um, wow. We've got electronics in it, we've got a Fishman. I'm guessing it's going to be a Fishman Sonotone. Um, nice simple setup, which plugs straight into the jack port. The jack peg, sorry. That guitar. Hello folks, you've probably just seen that video fade out to nothing and I've reappeared. That's because we've lost a little bit of footage uh, where I finished talking about this guitar. Um, but it was just me echoing really how great I thought it sounded, uh, really resonant and I can't wait to maybe plug that in and give you a little demo later. The video then changed ever so slightly because I've unboxed another guitar and the camera cut off. So we are going to go just to my right now currently and pick up a guitar that I did unbox that you will know or have seen nothing about. And what I unboxed next was this beautiful PRS Torero SE. So this is, I think it was a 2015 guitar, and I want to say it was made in one of the, I think it was one of the first they made really, where they kind of went against the grain of what a PRS is. A bit like their metal one, I believe PRS was, Paul Reed Smith himself was quoted to saying, uh, it's a shredder's dream. You've got a different neck join completely. Um, you've got a slim neck. You've got EMGs as well. Uh, so this guitar is very quirky. And this is definitely something I will be demoing because I'm very excited by this guitar. It's in incredible condition. I think it is a 2015. It's in impeccable condition, but I have also noticed as well. Now, feel free to chime in in the comments if I am wrong about this, but obviously I know that the PRS SEs are made by Court Guitars now. Um, this... I believe was the original factory that they were making their guitars out of. So this is made by World Musical Instruments Co. Limited with exclusive license for PRS. Um, but I'm very excited by this guitar. I think it's beautiful. Uh, it's an absolute stunning finish. Again, the condition's perfect. So we're really going to get into this guitar in a bit of time and uh, show you through some tones of that. But we still have, folks, one more guitar to do. And that brings the end of our unboxing and then we will get the amp set up and I will get you some tones because I'm very excited to play guitar today. We've also, don't want to attempt fate, but we've not injured ourselves yet as well with the opening blade. Which is always a positive, this close to Christmas. For you guys it will be New Year. Uh, when this video comes out, all be very close to approaching New Year. So I do want to wish you a Happy New Year. Hopefully your year has been good, if you're signing one off. Hopefully the next one will be even better. This looks like a Strat soft case to me. I knew that because I have one myself, so... Very intrigued as to what this guitar is going to be. I'm not sure what the cases are like these days. My Stratties... 2017, 2016 maybe. So it could be a similar era. Let's have a look what we got here. Well, it's a tele headstock with a rose, rose with neck. Mexican made. Well, that is beautiful. It's got the Fender 75 logo on the back. It's got a lovely blue sparkle. Not sure whether you can quite see that yet. It's a really nice guitar, to be honest. Neck feels great on it as well, to be fair. Um, I'm going to now pick all what are my three favourite guitars I'm going to demo. I've probably got to do... I'm going to do the Torero. Torero? Is it Torero? Oh, yeah, I'm going to do the PRS Torero. I'm going to do the Epiphone SG, just because I want to see how it compares to the three pickup SG that we've currently got in stock as well. And I'm going to do the Jackson, because Ben was very excited when he saw that the Jackson has arrived uh, in between shooting these clips. Um, 
So yeah, we'll get the Jackson out, shall we? See you in a second. Well, folks, so we are back with the first guitar out of the three that I've picked. So we're gonna play this beautiful PRS Torero. It does play a lot like, I feel that like there's been a lot of, to kind of make a Shredder's guitar, I think you do take a lot of generalizing. It feels a bit like an Ibanez to me. Uh, ultra slim neck, 24 jumbo frets. Obviously got EMGs and a Floyd Rose as well. Um, it feels just like a great version of a Shredder's guitar. You know, it's not the sort of thing that I'd go to a shop and buy. Um, but I'm finding it really expressive actually. I always find that when you're on a shred guitar, the strings are always really low to the frets and I always find that you kind of lose a little sustain with that and you kind of, that's where you get the harmonic overtones. Um, but I'm getting that in tons at the moment. Um, but I've been sat with this guitar for about five minutes, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So without further ado, um, I'm just gonna have a little play for you, see what you think. So now we've got the SG tuned up and ready to go. We've got a British style, in, British style sort of amp set up on the Kemper. Just gonna do that sort of classic rock, ACDC S sort of guitar. See what you think. <laughs> Thank you. 
back with the Jackson Road series. Uh, it's a strange V. Um, the knock guitars I've notoriously got on with, to be honest. Um, I find them a little uncomfortable to play. I think this is how you sit with it. Uh, I could be very wrong. Um, but yeah, it's very fun to play. Um, let's give it a little whirl, shall we? <laughs> Folks, so that's it. We are done with our final unboxing video of 2022. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey this year where we launched our YouTube channel, our TikTok, as well as started to post like more content on Instagram and Facebook. It's been a real pleasure to be the person that's brought you a lot of that content. It's just a bit of a thank you for me, really. Um, and we can't wait to bring you more fun stuff and more of the good stuff next year as well. So do let us know in the comments what sort of content you want from us and we'll do our best to deliver that for you in 2023. Happy New Year.